Um, fine mist. It's try. It's hard to get the uh, the the first coat on, and the it's reason this work. one wor looks as as much as it does is because it's it, it never had a gloss coat put over it, and we did that purposely so that so that no so that it, the paint would actually adhere Here. to it. Um, but uh, so this might be a little tricky, um, but I some I you know it, it's it's not a science, believe me. Um, might have to have you kind of swing around just a hair so I can see it. <laughs> 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 Don, let me. Don, can you back just a hair? Just like that. There you go. I think Mike just passed out somewhere. <laughs> uh, Mike, are you uh, Mike? Out. Where's Mike? <laughs> Mike just went. Yeah. What is that you're using, Don? It's just acrylic. This is burnt raw umber. Um, I, the raw umber is the burnt and the burnt colors. Again, like I said, it depends on the environment. You know, when we were we did the Tatooine stuff, we did it um, uh, more yellow, yellow, muddy kind of stuff. When we did I, I, that Geonosis, we had more red in it. You know, so it really dep depends on the environment you want to say that it, it went in. Uh, the idea is to obviously work this while it's still wet, the, but the beauty of the acrylic is that you could actually, just so Mike doesn't pass out, you could actually wash it off, uh, but it oh, it never really completely goes away, it especially stays in the crack. So that's, I always like that look, um, and that's what I kind of tried to stay, stay with, even when it, you know, even when it's it. So, it gives it, it gives it a little bit more age, and I, because I think the, uh, a white, white, thing just just looks unnatural especially in the Star Wars universe I mean none of these things are ever ever that clean remember George even commented that none, the, the robots were never as dirty as they were in the original um, Star Wars so it's just a matter of it's toast you can save the ingredients though and change heads this is yeah. raw umber and then I've got a list if you guys want it. Yes. You can use a woodland post to see if you can type pictures on it. Like you guys would be the same thing. Oh, look at that. If you let it dry, and you know what, we do at ILM a lot of times when we're doing stuff, some aging stuff. You let it dry in certain areas and you hit it. Um, also, sometimes using, you, you got to watch it though, with the, the, depending on the paint and stuff like that, but using. Um, um, alcohol. Sometimes alcohol mixed with water makes a real interesting thing, and then you hit that with an air dryer and you dry it, and it, and it looks really well. Like I said, if you ever overdo it, you just spray a little water on it. And you could use a thing. And then I like to get like, you know, you, again thinking naturally, um, have some like that that it would be dripping down, you know, constantly. He'd have an oil leak here or there or something. I've used tattoo ink before. Oh really? Blacks and browns. Really? Does that wash off though? Yeah, it's well, it stains white like crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, it, it's designed to stay in your skin forever, so it's sticky. It's it's not what you think. Tattooing is real pasty. Yeah. You know what? What's nice about the acrylics though, and you know, it doesn't have to be these. Uh, uh, the I, I suggested these because they, they're easiest to get. But I mean, we've used house paints. We've used you know whatever house paint though t tends to have the latex in it, and it works a little differently. But sometimes working with a different, a few different kind of colors, um, or different types of medium, I should say, uh, ends up um, working. Okay. So it's you know best tools is just this stuff. Sometimes you can even take a plastic bag and just crinkle it up and get some get some nice faux faux staining on there. And then you know again just using some other colors. Um, so are there many times that you prefer to like wipe versus dab? So, so, so like wipe, dabbing versus dab. wiping versus Yeah, well, I, the wipe, the wipe, the the brush work is really just to get it on there, yeah. um, really, and spread it out. And then the dabbing, uh, I I prefer to, to to do the and something you don't want to use with it, which I got here is something with a grain in it because it starts leaving. It looks like you know you leaned up against it with a flannel shirt. Well, that's cool too. Though. It could be, yeah. I hate, you know, I hate, I hate brush strokes. I, when I when I'm doing this stuff, I hate, I hate seeing brush strokes. So, so what's your preferred like, uh, scrap of fabric to use? Well, like a, a nice soft cotton, like a like a t-shirt, yeah. Cotton. Yeah. Remember, I think these. Jersey. 
And then the reds, you know, the reds can uh, go in there like a, uh, like a, uh, more more rust, the rust colors than. Yeah. Someone asked what color that one was. Raw umber. Let's go Dagobah on that one. No, that one was, uh, <laughs> no. oh, was it? Yeah, yeah. It was okay. a really dark one. Oh, was it? No, no. That one. That one? I think it was, it might have been rusty. Yeah, it would have. I mean, they, they just painted the whole thing white and then went in for the age of after it. Now, there was a, there was a, a thing that, uh, again, if you do too much, it's, like I said, it's the beauty of this, that you can wipe it off. I've actually rubbed paint off that was on for quite a while, so you can see it just comes right off. So how do you, do you uh, like the ILM R2 there that you've weathered a couple times, what do you use to clean it up with? So Usually just water, if, if it's too hard, uh, simple green works really well, and it does remove the paint underneath it. Again, that one you have to be a little careful because it doesn't have that clear coat on it, so. And on the, on the domes and stuff like that, I try to stay away from that blue finish because it's a little bit more delicate, so we, we, when, even when I'm aging, I, I try to keep that to a minimum uh, in those areas. So yeah, again, it, for me, it's, I, I'm, not, I'm not a painter, I'm not, I'm not an artist, and uh, I, um, it's just a subtractive, it just keeps, I keep working it, depending on how much time I have. Uh, I keep working it until I get something that looks kind of interesting. And, uh, I'm surprised my parts haven't started popping off. <laughs> <laughs> We were mentioning about the, the gloss finish. Does that matter how much gloss or how little gloss you have? I don't think so. It doesn't look like it's, it's worrying, a whole, making this matter a whole lot. What it will do is it'll make it easier for cleanup. So, you know, if you say, oh, you know, I don't, I don't like it. Then you get, again, if I had some simple green in here, it, this, would, this would clean off a whole lot, a whole lot nicer. But you can see how, how clean you could actually get that back to. It won't ever be white, white again. I mean, it definitely will not be this color again. But but the good thing about it, in my opinion, the good thing about it, in my opinion, is that it uh, it it gives it a more real white look. Than, than makes it look aged. Yeah, I mean, well, it makes it just a little bit more natural. There's something too stark about a, a, a real bright. bright now you do stuff opinion. like this, even though even if you're going for a clean, a clean look. look. Yeah, if this was freshly painted, if you know we were given this on set, you know, like like Jason's or this one was, I would say yeah, let's just definitely just do a big wash of the, of the raw umber. And just do it to the whole thing, and you know, like I said, just the raw umber seems to be a good one. Just going around the whole thing like this, just to bring out panels. Yeah, and, like that. and uh, you know what looks really good is on a silver. Once you get a silver, especially a rub and buff silver, even something like this, sorry, is this is this raw umber on there? It there it, it makes it. If, if there's a little green in it too, I don't have any here. But if there's just a touch of green in it, it makes it look a little bit more more real. Now the other thing, mind you, is that most of the time we're doing this for a film look, uh, you know, for film. So, so it it doesn't always quite look the same up close, but on film it looks, you know, looks a little. How long does it take to complete Roy? Uh, how much time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we did one. We had a we had a really aged one up once, and uh, it was uh, for episode two. And it was like three of us on a side, and we just. And you know we had we kept following each other around because we didn't want it one side to look different from the other. So, but like I said, you could just I mean even I want you all to go home and age your droids at least to this level. Let me drive it for a while and and then, and then um, the blacks I, I tend to uh, not want to use. Them. Let me go to the other side. Can we put, turn this? Yeah, yeah, we turn it. yeah, just turn it. Uh, uh, I don't want to. The, black, the blacks tend to tend to work again more for a, from a a, um, a a quick aging, but it's somehow something about the black doesn't doesn't read as well. It you know looks like a purposely planned dirt. So I tend to use the black and this is this is where it's tricky and this is real art Justin always used to do these for me. Is you know putting like a, a scuff mark or a burn like a burn hit or something on it. On the, on the or the or something. Yeah, on the our forehead we had a scar going across it, uh, across the side of its head or something like that. Um, so you still usually prefer the brush over, say, like an airbrush? I never use an airbrush. I don't know how to use those damn things. You ever use rattle cam? 
Uh, I have in a, in a pinch. And actually, most of uh, C-3PO for episode two was painted with a rattle can. Um, all that aging was done. And that's a very funny story. We had to get ready for uh, for Monday shooting, and it was Friday night when we got we, we figured out what the paint job was going to be. And uh, uh, George came in, and I had I had like all these samples because he said I heard it was going to be different various colors he wanted, uh, different various metals he wanted it to look like it was made out of. And so we, we went and pulled things with rusty bits off the wall and stuff like that from all over the studio and laid it all out and as a sample of him saying, oh yeah, pick this one here, pick this one here. And he kind of just said, I don't know, make the leg uh, look kind of burned and make one arm white and, you know, like was painted white once or something. So that I took copious notes and, and um, we did that. But we, we, we got the costume and we realized that we had somebody sent us, they, uh, not these archive ladies, they're great, the uh, previous administration sent us the wrong legs. Uh, they were too short for Tony Daniels. So I had to extend them on the spot on Friday night to, to and we, they, they had closed the prop shop so we I didn't know the materials. I didn't know where the stuff was stored. So we're like stealing stuff off of people's desks. So the colors actually of that C three PO were whatever colors people left on their desks that night. <laughs> And uh, that's what we ended up using. And the face had a lot of rub and buff on it because I had some of that. And it was just kind of like smash some of that paint on there, spray it with some black primer, smash some more you know brush brush stippling on it, pull some paint off to make it look like it was delaminated. Uh, one real good rust uh, effect is uh, you got uh, if you know a spray 77 or a spray glue, but spray 77 is a 3M product. And what we do is um, you you uh, prime the surface first. This is, wouldn't be for R2 necessarily, unless you wanted a rusty R2. Uh, prime the surface first, spray the uh, spray the stuff on, kind of thick, and then take one of these disposable brushes and start stippling it, and it gets a real nice like delaminated texture on it, and and it, like the little blisters of, of uh, that that form start popping, and then they form like a little crater and stuff like that, and you get that on there, and and do that as a base to the whole thing, and that that ends up looking really, really nice. And then over that, then you start using the oranges and, and reds and or, or like rust colors. You know, so it's orange. just a texture thing. It's a texture and it, it works really well. Wouldn't that matter chip fact, off when, though? What's that? Wouldn't that chip off? No, as a matter of fact, it's amazing. The glue? <laughs> the paint will stick to the glue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you're doing it while it's still wet. You're working it while it's still wet. Do you ever use Jamie Lee? I've never used it. It's great stuff. Mm -hmm. Take a lighter to it when it's still wet. Oh yeah? Blizzards? Like, get hard and do the same thing. It's probably fire. Fire, fire, fire. So you can see you can clean all that off. So. What kind of weathering would you suggest? Like this is like this is obviously probably a, a lighter drawing. What would you suggest for something that's like a darker color? Well, I think the same things. It may just be a heavier application of it, you know. And again, a layered thing. So even even the, I'll, I'll just keep it on this side. You know, um, I would again the keep the blacks to a minimum. I see that with a lot of fan stuff is they, they tend to break the age with blacks and if you want to make a darker black but s stick with the umbers and everything that the, they seem to be really the, the ones that look more natural uh, but you know putting on the on the paint Uh, thicker, you know, just just thicker. You can see you, you, you're up against a little bit of a wall, a, a, a brick wall, when you're using, you know, like that color, um, because it's not going to show it. And so the only other thing with that is maybe make, if you want it age, make it make put chips in there, like paint chips. So go in there with silvers or something like it's scratched. And but it, it, look at paint, look at real paint chips, and and realize, you know, you, what you realize is that there's not, it just doesn't expose silver. It exposes like a layer of paint. Under between the, the top coat and the next coat, yes. and so you maybe outline it with another color, a darker color, or a mid-range color, or something like that. Don, have you ever used streaks and tips? I have, yeah. The only problem with streaks and tips, it works well on the aluminum heads. The only problem with streaks and tips because it's alcohol-based, and it'll attack the, the lacquers. So. Um, Go with a lot more blacks when you get the carbon scoring after the shield generator was repaired. That yeah, would make a lot of blacks. Yeah, there. that and that again, exactly. That, there would be an explosion so we you know like again our four got an explosion near him so we had this whole class you know like look on his face so. and and then you know like I, the I think the, the way the best way to do it would be to go over with a, uh, a, the, a base coat all over the whole thing just to get a light light thing start rubbing some of that off 
Again, it really depends on how dirty you want to get it. I love dirty. We want this one to be clean. Set them on fire. Get some rust on it. Who's got a bunch of paper dead in the front? And then you're just playing with other colors on top of it. Sometimes you have to let the you, know, you can accelerate it with uh, with um, a hair dryer or something. Why'd you have to get white paint? I thought if you wanted to uh, oh, mix, make, oh, okay. make I a little bit white. Nah, no, no. no. Well, again, you could do the chips or something. You know, you could have like some white. Okay. I'm not going to attempt that. I'm not that good. And then I don't I don't have finer brushes. I get those little ones, but just trying to get laminated look here. So. Now, what's the difference between weathering for the camera versus weathering for just anybody looking at it up close? Well, what yeah, do you do differently? Yeah, I, you know, I'm saying that it, we kind of do it for the camera. Sometimes we'd have to do it over. Uh, overdo it, you know, a little bit more than you normally would. For the eye. I think that's the only difference. I think I like I always do it to my eye, and then if we get on set, it's like, gosh, that doesn't look like it's dirty at all, and we just put some more on it. Um, we had, for that matter of fact, that shot I, sh I showed you for the first thing, since we weren't ready for that, we brought on this arc, or whatever arc it was, I think it was the other one, um, ready to go, and um, it was clean, or it was cleaner. And and we brought it on, and they said, hey, you know, it's not. It's, it just was in the space battle. It should be dirtier. So we didn't have anything with us on set because we again we were rushed in, and um, the uh, prop guy only had black and I think black uh, dulling spray, which is basically the streaks and tips. And uh, we uh, we we I just did a quick. You know, like oh, you're like oh, it's a burn. You know, <laughs> kind of keep that thing through the most of the movie then, because. Oh jeez. So how'd you how'd you end up not knowing you were on first day call and showing up? Because they didn't put us on a call sheet. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> Don, wouldn't you say another thing that a lot of people seem to forget is the fact that there's gravity, so everything drips yeah. down. Yeah, I touched on it a little bit, but yeah, uh, that exactly that I like to see stuff coming. I, I always work in a, in a downward motion. Dirtier, you know, dirtier at the bottom. And the it could be. I mean, again, it depends. I, you know, I say, think, oh well, you know, you know, it's something, something hit him here, it dripped here, and then it, it dropped down. And you know, you could sometimes do that with some of these. Uh, you know, put a, put a lot of stuff on there. Yeah. Looking about yeah. the angles. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but you gotta watch where the where the uh, drips go. You, uh, this is probably too much up here. Um, but you gotta watch where the drips go because sometimes <laughs> it doesn't look natural. We got about 30 minutes, Tom. Okay. I don't think I'll be able to do the whole thing, but I mean, it just gives you a general idea. Tom, would you be able to turn it a little yeah. bit more so we can um, see it over here? I don't wanna... Wayne, can you help him turn it a little? Drips. <laughs> and again, th this would be a really good rust. Rust, uh, you know, uh, rust for a rust look is to have one. One other thing that we do a lot with uh, aging stuff too is actually coloring the water. The, I, I didn't want to get into that with this be only because it takes a lot of the paint. Yeah, it's really messy. Uh, but. Um, yeah, you could sometimes control it by starting the drip lines. Um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Bleeding heart. <laughs> so cool. But uh, yeah, if you if you you can make washes with the water and and just go. Yeah, yeah, you could just use the same. You could also get tempera paints and put them in there. Tempers tend to stain a little bit. So you said once this is set, you can take it back off again? 
Yeah, or just just rub hard with water. Just rub hard with water or simple green or some you know some non-alcohol based. Yeah. 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 Tell those guys to yeah. keep it quiet. The guys behind you. It's just such a commitment. <laughs> it is. Well, again, like I said, you just start out. The best thing to do with any with any of this stuff is start out light. You know, don't uh, don't uh, don't go into uh, don't go into a, a really heavy duty aging job. And this is not my best drip. Yeah, that's um, that was what was that? That was burnt sienna and uh, I think raw burnt uh, burnt umber mixed together. Burnt sienna on its own was a little too too red, but and then if you get uh, was it? It's the yellow one, the yellower one. Oh, okay. yellow ochre. Yeah, mix that in. Oh, after you do that, not mix it in, but after you do that, you get a drip of that going, and it starts really looking more rusty. But this stuff work. This would work for a, even a, like a stormtrooper kind of stuff. Is that how you did the sand trippers? They, yeah, I didn't, but yeah, that's how they would have. Now, what about C3PO? You just use Delic spray on it? Not, not the gold one, no. Not the gold one? You just let, you let it go? Yeah, they, they worked out the, uh, the, the drips, uh, the drips, I'm thinking of that. Uh, they worked out the, uh, uh, the reflections later. I, I thought of, like, giving them a little highlight here and there, but um, it, it didn't. Uh, it didn't have to seem to warrant it, so. How many tries did it take uh, to get the right look on the sprayer? With the gold? Yeah. Well, that, that, was, that came straight from the vacuum metalizer. So, it, you know, they know that they knew what color it was. Because the vacuum metalizing, the way the process works, as I understand it, is um, they, they, take a, it's, uh, they, they take it and coat it with uh, uh, some sort of material that and they Sorry. put it as they suspend it in a, a vacuum chamber Ron. and and uh, polarize the, the two parts so they've got they, they make it I guess negative charge or positive yeah they charge. polarize the ions in a vacuum field and that way all the vapor dust just, really just floats in the air floats in the air and then it, 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 it lands on on it, well I think they charge though the, the part the part and it so it's attracted to the part and they use aluminum powder for that and then just to get a gold color they they spray a gold clear coat over or a yellow clear coat, basically. So. What do you think, Nick? What do you think? It's awesome. It's the best. Here's in the signature. For sure, but that's going next. <laughs> Outside or inside? Inside. Uh, Maybe I could sign my name into Rust. <laughs> the whole thing's a big signature. Uh, that's cool, man. So just how you did those um, the Pepsi ones that were given away for episode one? Then you whether the set that was a oh, prize. Oh yeah, yeah, episode two, yeah. Or some, yeah, in the garage or something. Yeah, I did it in my garage. My son actually garage. helped me. My son was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go back and I didn't tell him that. <laughs> yeah, Weaver actually had one of those. Yeah, I, I met the guy he, he sold it to. Oh really? Yeah, he's sitting in front of me to this morning. <laughs> He's uh, the, Lisa Stevens' husband. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not not Ben Stevens. Right. Lisa. Lisa, Stevens. Lisa the uh, fan club. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I'll just touch on the feel a little bit. Um, so that, that's that's all right, I guess. It looks kind of rusty. Um, it's not, I, I like to. Well, I'm used to wetting the other one because if I don't wet the other one, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> But um, these, again, you work against gravity now, so I just take it. This is like, you know, the feet are always dirty coming. Why are you going against gravity? Well, yeah, I figure it's splashing up. So, so the darker parts, I want to keep the darker down low. <laughs> this one, again, depending on where you, what environment it would be on, it could be black or whatever. It's going to be chalky. Don't use Rossi in it. <laughs> and also, I, I like any anything that has a, a has a recess. I like to shadow. It just just to get something darker in there, just to make the the thing pop a little bit more.
And yeah, I'm, I'm putting I'm putting it right on the brush only because I, I, normally I would have a palette and I would just be dipping into it, but this is probably the best way to do it. But I would suggest doing it that way, just split, spritzing out a bunch of paint in there. The idea here being is that you know you kind of want it to be um, like fading, fading, get dark, lighter up here and darker down there. But in general, I always ge generated, generally kept the uh, the feet pretty dirty. Rags too dirty. The same day. Yeah. What a day. What's left? Yeah. Uh, you all got to walk out of the street and everybody's like, Yeah. I hope you like the film. Oh, that's great. Sorry, it's out of time. Gotta go. What's the best Star Trek story from episode three? I think I told it though, we're showing up on set and saying I'm out of a job. Uh, <laughs> were they just razzing you or were they kind of serious? No, he was serious. He, was, he, I, didn't want to, he, knew, he wanted to do it all day time. Yeah, because I actually you were met there. with you like the night before and you were like really bummed. I, I mean, you, it was like... I was, was that when you slid you your wrist? Here, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did that on, my fa on Father's Day last year. I did a really stupid thing. I had a brand new sharp blade on a, on a, uh, on a, on a razor knife, on a carpet knife. And I, my, my wife designs handbags, and uh, we're shipping some fabric off to the factory. And I'm, I'm holding the, the tubes are too long that the fabric's rolled on. And, and so I took a pipe cutter and I made the pipe. I, I, I knew I was going to cut myself, right? So I took a pipe cutter and made a pipe cutter. <laughs> and it didn't go in deep enough, so I figured I'll just score it with the, with the knife. So I put a nice sharp blade on it and held it like that. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's I did like, exactly the same thing here in, in cutting so brisket film. Oh, so that's that that's my that's my scar. Wow. I think everyone who builds an R2 has <laughs> yeah. just to show sure. for hey, it. Hey. And uh, yeah, that's that's the other thing that happens, the phenomenon that happens. Okay, yeah. Oh well, at the time I ripped my spleen out, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I hear every horror story, you know. So so you knew they were shooting for the first day, you weren't on the call sheet. We thought you'd just show up anyway with an R2. No, no, I was there and I get a call. We were on radio, so oh. they says, Hey, we need an R2 on set. Why aren't you on set? It's like no one told me. Oh, and um, okay. so uh, I showed up, but oh, oh the story I was gonna tell I mean, Jason might know might remember this. He was actually there when we started shooting, and uh, I think I got there on a Wednesday. I think I was told Thursday. No, I was told Friday actually. Uh, that's when I when all this came down. And Monday we we're going to start shooting. Oh. And um, uh, it was like Saturday that we were. Yeah, that's right. It was in between that. We we didn't know what was going to happen at that point. And um, we're we're I just I was just told and and we, where we were we were sharing a space with a creature shop, and. Uh, Ewan McGregor and, and his and Kyle, I think it's Kyle, yeah, Kyle Rowling, who's Count Dooku's stunt double, uh, where they're, they're, they were rehearsed their lightsaber duels, were right up the road. So they would always walk by, you know, the creature department, so they popped their head in to see what was going on. And Ewan, they were making a, dub, a dummy of Ewan anyway. <laughs> so um, so he popped in and he saw the R2s out. It was the first day the R2s were all out. And he's like, he came in and, he, and, and, uh, <laughs> and, I, I, and we were all like, it was literally 20 minutes before this is when we were told this, and everyone's like, oh. and you know, you could, you could read on our faces that was some, something was uh, something was uh, amiss. And I told him, he goes, ah, those wankers. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> he says, ah, oh, they can't do that. He says, no, 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 they won't do that. And they, they really did. So, how much so, input do you have with the CGI guys in doing their R2s? Because I noticed there was like a battle R2 going against this, like a super battle droid, and it looked like a dome. It's, yeah, it was, it was like. Well, we shot some of that. It was stuff. like a plated metal, you know, and it looked like it was armor. Yeah, we. Video tribute for Oh, yeah. I think that's actually a super predator's hand. Oh, it is? No, that yeah, was it's hand actually his hands over yeah. the yeah. dome. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. a battle droid's hands over it. Matter of fact, I think we did the beginning of that shot. We had R2 like turn around and look and then, and then jerk it back as if it was getting yanked by the droid. Um, but uh, the. Uh, 
the I I was the guys. They were really into. Matter of fact, they all have R2 Builders uh, stickers. I gave them all R2 Builders because they're honorary R2 Builders, aren't they? Um, and uh, they were really into it. Um, and they they wanted to get it right. Matter of fact, John Farmer, who actually built the geometry for the for the he modeled R2. Um, he uh, he actually even ca caught an animation error. You know the way they had R2 moving at one point, and he wrote a letter. He said even an email. Even at, at he writes in there. Even at risk of my job, I, I can't let this allow, allow this to, to happen. So he, he was policing it as well, and they changed it. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to remember what the difference was. It, it was I think it, it was rocking back and forth, but, but the arms were as if they were independent of the body, and so they were moving too. And it, 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 it looked horrible actually. Wow. So, uh, but uh, I, they they were checking with me. They come over. They they. They took the measurements, uh, the uh, CAD drawings that I did have. Uh, they they modified them some, somewhat. And so I know Stan Winston said that the CGI is going to be the next plateau of model building, but still, there's actually prop makers out there that yeah, they, you know, they I enjoy the physicality of. Well, you know, you still have to have stuff for actors to interact. <coughs> with. Um, fortunately, Sky Captain bombed, so they they, they won't. <laughs> They won't. They won't go that route any too soon. Um, and I think the actors still, although although they, you know, they claim oh, they can act with anything. They, they they still. I don't think they really enjoy the the experience of shooting. I know it drove you you went crazy. Um, and and other people, you know, it, it was just so difficult for them to wrap their head around it. Um, even though you know, then they could go on stage and and like pretend that that whole you know <laughs> six hundred people weren't sitting there. But um, I, don't, I don't think these guys, model makers or prop makers, will be out of jobs any too soon. Right? Amen. <laughs> well, that's. Uh, that's uh, that one's. Uh, I was trying to do a more graduated thing, but I was getting frustrated with it. So once I find the best thing to do, is move on to the next spot. Um, and again, about 15 minutes long. Yeah. Uh, you, you have some questions too, so I just want to get that. Um, Did you see R4's um, body in this one? The red dome R R R4 piece? No, he gets killed. He <laughs> gets killed right at the beginning. Well, you saw the footage. Yeah, yeah. he gets his head ripped off. Yeah, no, you never see his body. Okay. The thing is, now that George has established it, I don't think it's any of the clips yet. But of course, R2's in that in that uh, fighter. that fighter too. So they had shots of R2 popping out of it and being ejected out of it. So all of a sudden, somehow it fits in there. Well, didn't they just blue screen like the paint so they could change a the paint scheme? That was the original concept. As a matter of fact, if you saw that photo that I had, uh, I read the John the, the Rensselaer book. That he just the making. Is that, does he so talk about that in there? Yeah. That didn't work. We yeah. ended up repainting it. Okay. Uh, we painted it first for Obi Wan's uh, Starfighter. It shot all the R four stuff at ILM, including the R and J dome getting ripped off of it. And then uh, then we they had four days off of shooting that thing, and we repainted it again and made an Anakin ship with the clone the chrome. And that's how it currently uh, is in there now. Um, very funny that the, the, when we did the, uh, the dome getting ripped off, the original dome is the one from episode two. The, it was a fiberglass dome that we used for R4. Then we had to create the broken and burned one. And a lady named Carol Bauman actually made up, came up with the interior of it. Well, there was a sketch, a rough sketch from the art department, but you know, I ended up helping her. She put all this kind of, kind of, kind of cool stuff inside there. And, Problem was it wasn't really relating to what was the panel. Not that it needed to, but the way that yeah, the way the Greebleys were in there, they they weren't necessarily relating to stuff. And I thought it would it would be something better. So we tried to put more things like around the perimeter and stuff like that. It was just going to be a charred mess anyway, and that's exactly what happened. We painted it, put it all together, and then we had one of our welders take a uh, plasma cutter and just cut the cut the dome. I've got videotape of it somewhere cool. of the dome being cut uh, for real, and it just literally started a fire on the inside of the whole thing and turned it into a big big chart black and mad and melted mess at that because there's like a distributor cap in the middle underneath was a hub cap and that just just melted to, to hell so uh for the shot where we did it actually I, again i don't know if it's still, still in the film i haven't seen the whole sequence there's a fire that r4 has to put out and i think it's this panel we made a made the door open no it's this panel uh, next to the hollow eye. Uh, we made the door open and a little fire extinguisher and, and he, he puts the fire out. Because that one related the most to the fire extinguisher that you never saw in um, New, Hope. New Hope, right? And, um, and then, so we had, I, I mechanized the, the door to just, you know, do that with a servo. 
And uh, then we, we shot that scene. And then we, uh, they drilled a hole in the top of the R, R, the R and J dome. And then we took another wire. Or no, that was, I think that was the wire. Yeah, I think that was the one. And we wrapped it. Before, before it went up, we wrapped it except three times around the head and placed the head back on. They put charges all around the inside. And then that cable, if the starfighter is painting that way and the R2 is on that side, excuse me. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> um, and um, so we wrapped it around. R2, uh, the ship's pointing that way. The R4 head is, is there wrapped around. And they had a cable, this cable that went up and then it went this way and it came back this way, all on pulley systems. And I had the job of, of, of yanking it off, right? But the oddest thing was, was that the camera, camera's like over there, I think it was just kind of shooting off that way. And the R force head there, and I have to pull it, and I have to like come right in its path. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So it's like, but at the same time, they didn't want me on screen, obviously. So I had to do this thing where I pulled it and like hit the ground so that I wouldn't get hit by the thing coming flying past me. And um, so we did it four or five times. And, but, and the first couple of times, you know, it just kind of yanked off and then kind of dragged off. And it's like, oh, pull harder. So it's like a running start. And yank on it. And we tried all different things. And it ended up, I'm not actually quite sure what, what ended up wound, wind up wound up in the film because uh, uh, flow. It's a, it's much more of a slow, yeah, yeah. slow thing. And I think they they transitioned to a CG one. If they even used the, the real one, I'm not quite sure. I have to. I never asked John Noel what they ended up doing with them. So. Um, you got those questions? You got questions? Uh, it was just basic basic questions. Maybe a couple from the audience would probably be easier. Yeah, go for it. Let me just. I see. got one. Yeah. Where's the scraps? <laughs> the scraps. <laughs> From, oh, they're in the archives. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, they, we kept them. We kept them. No, no, no. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have let them. I said we kept. We kept both. Both the original head and the, and the, um, and the, um, the broken one. And it, I mean, there pieces were flying off the thing constantly. You know, we had to go and pick up all the pieces and kind of stick them back on. And it was a very exciting actually event. The the, the, the pyro event was pretty cool. Do you guys have a DVD player here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you get any anybody see our film, our, our ILM film from yesterday? Yeah, yeah. 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 excellent. Did you have okay. really but I saw it down in the room. Do yeah. you have some time so to take the drone off the ILM? I have it. So I get the picture of it? Yeah. It's right here. I'll put you to that. Yeah, we'll see stuff. Okay. All right. So what, what you're doing, are you okay with it? When you're doing shots, uh, like a, a close-up, door opens, arm pops out, do you have specific R2s that are just for Yeah, it's the yeah, aluminium ones. Yeah. Aluminium. You know, yeah. Putting stuff yeah. into. Yeah, it's the aluminum ones, basically. There, there's a two-legged one that's got spring-loaded arms. You know, these little these things are spring-loaded and moves up and down. And and I could buy, there's nuts and stuff in there that I could like tighten it off. Even like really close in somewhere, you know, you're right in on top. That's of all them. that. Do you one. have a full R2, or you just uh, grab a shell? And no, it's full R2. It's full R2. Occasionally, you know, we might leave the head off, or if I if the arm's in the way, then we'll. Uh, then we'll we'll take the arm you know take the arm out of the way. But anything uh, specific? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it's, it's always real. Anything specific on how you're weathering the dome? Oh yeah, I know. So sorry, you guys can't even see this. Uh, basically, I'm just sibling. I'm just trying to get it more of an even an even feel here because just because that in my in my imaginary world that the um, the aluminum would would oxidize and would be a di have a different feel to it than this. And again, it probably would be a different color. Like I said, it would probably be a little bit more, maybe some greens or something. What color do you have there? This is a uh, burnt uh, uh, raw umber. And, um, and again, then just rubbing it selectively. Oh, I can turn this Go ahead. Uh, just rubbing it selectively and just, again, making you know some areas uh, dirtier than, than others. And again, the, the head is a really good spot for um, for, for drips and, and that sort of thing. Hey Don, uh, I know these guys want to get a, uh, a group photo with you. Okay. Um, because I think this is probably the last time that we're all here at one spot together. So. Um, but I'm creating art. You're doing so good. <laughs> the, the, now, what's fun is Nick gets to go finish. Yep. Yeah. Try and match it. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to come by and I want to see all these at least with base coat. Where's Santa? Um, <laughs> chicken man. He'll, yeah. he'll, he'll have fainted by then. <laughs>
darker colors on the darker droids. What would you recommend for a black, so like an imperial droid? Again, you know, the, the um, just duller color, you know, just duller okay. overall. You know, I just, know, do you want to go with lighter to try to bring out, or I would, I would overall use a um, selective uh, mix of, of of some darker colors just to get the, just again because you guys won't be using a screen use one necessarily uh, to to get uh, darker some darker stuff on there just to mix it up. Yeah, because I know like mine here is the black and copper. And yeah, and dark colors won't show up too good on black. I tell you, you know, on the on the uh, the uh, the copper droid that we did, uh, we didn't use any um, aging on that, um, okay. only because it it uh, it didn't uh, mm -hmm. it, it didn't seem to call for it, and it it had a natural kind of like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a new yeah, there's also a possibility, of course, the Empire takes better care of themselves. They don't let it get rough and yeah. dirty. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, in general, I mean, that's, that's one thing to look at. I mean, you've got stormtroopers that are pretty clean for the most part. <laughs> Vader's, Vader's clean. Wayne, why don't you go ahead and start clearing that off because we're going to do the group shot right there. A little, whatever he's not using. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and Rich, you can grab this playing. stuff here of mine and let's just pull it off the side here. Oh, yeah. Not in this one. He's taking the picture. You guys go ahead. I'm trying to. Okay. Okay, here we go. Everyone say R2! R2! Say R2! R2! And the exact same thing one more time. Put your arms up, R2! R2! Blank canvas. <laughs> yeah, listen, guys. Uh, Don's got a got a run, but he's gonna uh, come back by tomorrow. He'll probably sign some more things. Yeah. He's been. I've been giving him grief about him all week. The fiber is the best I've seen because he actually has one life per fiber back there. Oh wow! Thank you so much. You have, you have a battery in it? No. Oh, cool. Sure. I think Thank I you. I'm an official member of the Five first now. Yeah. Look it up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, the Empire Strikes Back. Five, five out of six movies. I mean, that's 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 pretty. That's history. Isn't is there it? another one? Yeah. Hold on, let me. Well, I mean, what kind of motor is that, that for the better. head rotation? Is that's that a, a huge servo. It's like a six hundred dollars servo. A model aircraft servo, or it's a, yeah, I'm like not quite sure. I think, I think they were originally or designed, yeah, designed for a different industry, but they they, they sell them through radio control. So those are the batteries. We we made these custom battery packs. Now, when and did you add the fiber optics Where's the soundboard at? We did that for... Uh, the soundboard's not in here. We didn't put it in there. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> we did the, all this for uh, episode two. How does Kenny fit in there? <laughs> it's, it's a simple servo, so... You still it's like fiber with um, the hockey puck that Grant did? Yeah. So it's fiber. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Don. Can I have your attention, please, real quick? Uh, obviously, uh, if it was not for Don... Most of this weekend would not have been quite as fun as it has been, especially the appearance by George this morning. So we had a couple things we want to give him. Number one, an R2 Builder's hat. You know mine, thank you. Mine that we did for episode two broke, and I don't have it anymore. Well, there you go. There you got the hat. We got you an embroidered R2 Builder's shirt. Oh, swell. Thank you. And we got you uh, the official C3 R2 Builder's letterman jacket. Make a, a speech here. I don't know if you guys, uh, you maybe do. Uh, I mean, Jason is the one that really uh, you, you owe all out of this too. I mean, he, he's really cool. Uh, pulled it off by stalking me, right. bothering me, and say, "Hey, could you do this?" So, no, but I think you, you guys owe a lot to Jason and Dave Everett. David, absolutely, Dave Everett. absolutely, you guys. Yeah. And. I want to say, for the record, you guys stop all your quibbling and quabbling back and forth and be a big happy family, all right? 